Uh, my name is Anna Mignani. I'm working uh, at the CNR, which is the National Research uh, Council of Italy, a public research lab. And uh, I'm working on optical fiber sensors and on spectroscopy. I started my work in 1983. Actually, the fiber optic sensor started much before, and in fact, this year we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of gyroscope. But I am considering the 1983 not only the start of my career, but also the year of the first international conference on optical fiber sensors. And uh, to comment the evolution of uh, this technology, I would like to consider this conference uh, as the milestone for taking track of the evolution. And I would like to mention some magic words that indicate a real milestone of this technology. One magic word is uh, for sure Distrib distributed, eh, which appeared in 1984. It means that you can use the optical fiber, just the, just the wire made of silica for distributed sensing along the entire length of the optical fiber. This is very powerful. The other magic word that appears some years, some years later, that is fiber brag gratings. Mm -hmm. Uh, that means that you can make multi-point measurements along the fiber of many parameters, for sure, strain and temperature, and then if you use uh, special coatings, also other chemical parameters and many others. And the other magic word that appeared in the 2000s is holy fibers, that are now called um, photonic crystal or microstructured fibers, and these are very promising. Recently, all these new, what, what, which was all the, I mean, new technology, they were combined together to make not only distributed sensing, but also multi-parameter sensing along the entire fiber length. At the moment, uh, I'm working on food. Uh, the analysis of food, uh, for quality and also for safety by spectroscopy. Uh, we are using optical fibers as light guides uh, to couple the source uh, and the detectors and to bring the light exactly where we want to do the measurement for online measurements real time. Uh, spectroscopy is powerful for this kind of measurements because you get uh, um, non-destructive uh, testings without chemicals. So it is really a, a, green, a green analytical technique. Um, my plans are to make uh, fiber optic platforms uh, for spectroscopy, for analyzing liquids, wine, olive oil. In my region in Tuscany, we are producing excellent quality of wine and olive oil. So this is uh, important for our industry. And you know, simply dipping your platform where the liquid is in the process, in the fabrication process of the product, that will be uh, challenging and that is, hope, my future work. Food is a very complex matrix, very complex. If you think that blood is complex, consider that food is even more complex than blood. There are a lot of ingredients. So the visible spectrum is informative about the color, Color means, uh, uh, means a lot of dyes that are inside the food, which are good for you. But the best informative uh, um, band is the near-infrared. Huh? Near-infrared and mid-infrared. But mid-infrared uh, means source detectors are more expensive, so the near-infrared is a very informative band for food analysis. In the near-infrared, you're finding information on water, cellulose, fats, oils, uh, a lot of ingredients that are in food. But because they are all together, what you really measure is uh, is not the individual spectra, but it's just uh, the overlap of all spectra, okay? So you measure a signature, you measure a spectroscopic signature, and the real challenge is the processing of the spectroscopic signal by mathematics to extract the information you're looking for. If you are able to just shine light on your food and from the reflected light or the light that passes through a liquid, understand what is inside. In practice, you taste 
the food simply by light. This is why we invented the term photonic tasting. You know? so just using the light to understand and to perceive what is inside the food. 